just review points that we've covered so far and continuing now. <clears throat> Friday evening, the two main points were through service to the name, one can understand who Krishna really is. According to Chaitanya Charitamrita, this famous Atakshi Krishna Namadi Nabhaved Grayam Indriyai Sevan Mukhi Jiva Dao Swayam Evas Paratyada. That verse, translated by Srila Prabhupada in Chaitanya Charitamrita, says that by serving the name and by taking Krishna Prashadam, by that service, one can understand Krishna, how, who Krishna really is. So I think we would all like that, not just notionally, but realize. And rather than, there, were, there are many elements to that, but the, the emphasis was service to the name. And we've been emphasizing also, repeating, 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 text number seven from Nectar of Instruction, which we'll do again today, that speaks about the name. And uh, it's, it's connected to t today's song and today's message. But the, to serve the name means the name is a person. The name isn't just a sound. Now, to realize that abhinatvam nama namino is not possible just by some mental adjustment, just like align your mind the right way and voila, the name and Krishna are the same. It, it doesn't work that way. It's not a product of mental adjustment. It's not that kind of an experience. It's not that phenomena. It's through the medium of service to the name, one can realize that nama rupe avatadi, the form of the name has appeared in this world. Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings. To, to awaken our love for the name because the name and the person named are not different. That's what this song is going to teach us. And then uh, the, the, the verse speaks of the sita, the rock candy or sugar candy is very sweet by its nature, but when one has jaundice, factually, for those who have had jaundice, you, you know, like I know, it tastes not sweet. It tastes bitter. And yet it's the medicine that the jaundice, by which the jaundice is cured, so similarly the jaundice-like condition of avidya that covers the living entity becomes removed by the name, the sweet name that may taste in the beginning not sweet. But that's because of our disease, the, the disease of avidya. And then this morning we discussed the phrase adarad that's in that verse, which we're going to recite again shortly. Adarad is... Um, Carefully chanting, and my mind is going to, I'm, I'm, the song is going to have its translation and I have to have the sound set up for it. <laughs> so, Adarad is carefully chanting. Carefully chanting. So we, dis, we discussed, what's that? Sounds nice. What is it? And how do you do it? So, rather than give the morning class, you can listen to the recording of the morning class. But there's elements to carefully chanting. And it does connect, it certainly connects with the mood of service. 
because constitutionally we're servants, but we now we're serving wrongly. We're serving something temporary and expecting happiness from that service of something temporary. And at best, the mode of goodness happiness conditions us also for the cycle of birth and death in the mode of goodness place. But it's bondage unless and until that mood of service done carefully through the chanting of the holy name takes us to Krishna. So we discussed the carefully chanting message. And now, um, today, the introduction to our topic today is um, the uh, Gitavali, which is one of a collection of songs, one of Bhakti Vinod Thakur's 100 books. Try writing a book someday. It's a collection of it's, fr it's a collection of songs. This is eight songs about the name. And this is song number six. And just before um, we begin singing together, I want to appreciate um, our young Avig here who maybe 20, 20, less than 24 hours ago got tapped on the shoulder saying, could you sing this song? together with everybody and you know how to play harmonium and maybe you could learn the song and he said I'll try and so here he, he, it had to do with an oversight my fault that I just I'm used to having a certain persons who are able to sing these songs of Naratam Das Thakur and Bhakti Thakur very very nicely and they couldn't make it and then, so last minute. And just another little explanation. The, the reading that you just um, all took part in, it, the, the compliments go to credit where credit is due. It's um, uh, Keshava Bharati Maharaj. Now here in New Jersey, we don't so much hear his name. He uh, spends most of his year at Govardhan when Tamal Krishna Maharaj and Giriraj Maharaj decided together they would, they wanted a place, an ISKCON place, not their place, where senior devotees could go and be absorbed in the mood of Vrindavan without the hustle and bustle of other places. So they together they purchased what was previously owned by a king, just a, a, a small place, but just overlooking Govardhan Hill. You just go up on the roof and you can almost touch Govardhan Hill, the opposite side of the street. And Keshava Bharati Maharaj accepted the service at Tamal Krishna Maharaj's request to look after the place. So he's been staying in Vrindavan. And while staying in Vrindavan, it's a little extra explanation, but it, it makes it, for me at least, it makes it more sweet. Uh, every year when devo senior devotees would come, they would come to that place and what has become now a, a, a ritual is every day for the last 12 years, every day for four to six hours a day, they just do one thing. They read. They don't discuss. They just read aloud Prabhupada's books. And their experience is, wow. There's so much purification just from hearing aloud Srila Prabhupada's books. You know, when they have their meals and so forth, they discuss some points, but it's just hearing and hearing and hearing. So from that, I just spent some time with Keshav Bharti Maharaj in Houston. He has accepted the assignment from the BBT of making audio books of all the Prabhupada's books. There's a little recording studio and some number of hours a day, two to four hours a day, he's in this special recording studio that's, you know, 
two and a half minute walk from where he, he's staying at the ashram and recording all of Prabhupada's books. And he's going, shh. And he has a reading group. Maybe some of you here in New Jersey are participating in one of them. His is about 4,000 people. Every day for two hours or something like that, he, some, at least for some time, I don't know the duration, he has a system where wherever people are in the world, and they, people send me, you know, I'm part of Keshav Bharti Maharaj's reading group, and it's really nice. I get to hear Prabhupada's books every day live. No discussion. Just hear. And then a third time of the day, he has a group of people for two hours. They just read Srimad Bhagavatam. They don't discuss it. They just hear Prabhupada because he's... <laughs> he loves hearing Prabhupada. He doesn't really want to hear anything else because everything is there. So when we had a similar Japa retreat in Houston, he was there and said, could you participate? Well, he said, I have to protect my voice. But if I can take part, I wouldn't want to read. So we made a slot in the schedule for Kesho Bharti Maharaj to read. And in case he couldn't do it, then someone else was compiled all the reading and they did it. So that's what we're doing. We're just yadyadacharati shreshtas. And we're the other people, tadadevi tororjana. We're just following the example of Kesho Bharti Maharaj. Just Devotees, please read Prabhupada's books aloud and be happy. That, so, that, just a little sharing of what we just did. We just, kudos to Kesha Bharti Maharaj and persons that are with him in the hearing. So if you have to do a service like this again, read slowly and read with emphasis, like a like little drama in your voice, not so quickly. Better to read less and hear the message. Just hear the, hear the, hear the, with emphasis, the message of our founder, Acharya. Very powerful. So now, song by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Song number... Six of Namastaka. So Aveg is going to lead us and we're going to follow. Samardanga, a cartel player? Somebody has car. Oh, Mataji. Hey. Vachaka Dui Swarupto Vacha Vachaka Dui Swarupto Vacha Vacha Ka Dui Swarupta Ma Vachatava Shri Vigraha Chidananda Kara Vachatava Shri Vigraha Chidananda Kara 
वाचता श्री विग्रह चिदानंद वाचा का स्वरूप तब श्री कृष्ण दीना अच्छा का स्वरूप श्री कृष्ण दीना वाचा का स्वरूप तब श्री कृष्ण दीना अच्छा का स्वरूप श्री कृष्ण दीना वर्ण रूपी सर्वाजीवा आनंद विश्रा वर्ण रूपी सर्वा जीवा आनंद विश्रा Oh uh-huh. 
short notice. I'm sure with sufficient practice it would have been altogether different. So there's a translation to the song and I'll just summarize the translation to the song and then we'll hear a nice recording of the translation being spoken. We heard in song number two that was Friday evening that Nama Rupe Avatari, the Supreme Lord has very kindly appeared in this world in his Nama Rupa, in his spiritual form of sound. And the benedictory nature of that sound vibration is in the song. It relieves one of ignorance, the, the jaundice like condition of ignorance. So, this song specifically. Nama and Nami, a verse that many of us know from somebody, it's the mother of this little boy. This little boy needs his mother. Wow. 
Whoa. Okay. There's his father. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Nama Chintamani Krishnas Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha Purnashadho Nitya Mukto Abhina Tvam Nama Nami No, that last line. Abhina Tvam Nama Nami No. Abhina means non different. Tvam is having the quality of non difference between Nama and Nami, the name and the object named. Krishna and his name are non different because Krishna is absolute and the name is absolute, they're non different. So he says using different language, vacha and vachaka, vacha and vachaka, <laughs> name and the object named. So vacha, this last line, vachaka sarup name rati. So he's saying they're, they're, while they're equal, one is more merciful than the other, which sounds like a contradiction. But there are... If you make an offense to the form of Krishna, like in deity worship, you don't do that. But if it happens unintentionally, then it's corrected, or the re reaction for that is corrected by chanting of the name. Therefore, the name is more merciful. That's, that's what the song says. So I, Bhaktivinoda, take shelter of the name. And... Now let's hear the description. possess two transcendental forms, properly called vachya, that which is nameable, and vachaka, that which denotes. The vachya is your beautiful personal bodily form full of transcendental knowledge and bliss. Vachaka forms are your holy names such as Sri Krishna and so forth. Thus, appearing in the form of transcendental sound vibration, you are the resting place for the bliss of all souls. Your unlimited manifestations are found in these two forms. Taking pity and being very kind, they confer upon the fallen souls entrance into your divine pastimes. two forms of yours. O Lord, I have understood your vachaka form to be even more merciful than your vachya form. Thus do I find your holy name most wonderful. It 
is the declaration of the Vedas that the holy name of the Lord and the Lord himself are non-different yet still the holy name is more merciful than the Lord himself If one is an offender to Lord Krishna personally, but has genuine faith in the holy name and calls out with all his heart and soul, Rama, Krishna, Hari, Rama, Krishna, Hari, Rama, Krishna, Hari. Then all his offenses are cast far away and he floats without difficulty in the ocean of divine bliss and transcendental mellows. A person may commit offenses to the Vachya or the transcendental figure of the Lord. But if he is under the shelter of the pure holy name, he crosses over all those offenses. At the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami, Bhakti Vinoda begs for constant loving attachment for the Vachaka or Divine Holy Name of the Supreme Lord. We're going to go through it one more time. Just um, seeing the, the verses and discussing them one by one. The painting you probably recognize. This is Krishna in Dwaraka seeing the reflection of his form on the marble and becoming enchanted with his own form. So, without reading again the translation, there are these two forms. Krishna, of course, there's more than two. There's the deity form. There's the literary form we mentioned. But his vacha, that's what you see in the painting, uh, and vachaka, the sound vibration, that which denotes the, the person. Vacha, bodily form, and the vachaka, that's the names, such as Krishna and so forth. And he appears both ways. By sound vibration, uh, he purifies all who hear that sound vibration. And 
the unlimitedness of Krishna is all packed up in both. With every, within every name, there's everything. And within Krishna is everything. And both, by their manifesting in this world, they're inviting and giving entrance into Krishna's pastimes. So it's, it's, when Krishna appeared, obviously, he's, in, he's extending his pastimes to all who may happen to be there. But the same is true for the name. We don't have that realization, but Bhakti Vinod Thakur does. And then we hear this nice teaching. Of the two, although the equal one is more merciful. And why more merciful? Well, it's declared in the Vedas. They're non-different. Abheda, Abhinatvam, Nama, Namino, they're non-different. But still, one of them exhibits more mercy. We say the same thing. We discussed this on Friday evening. But Krishna and Lord Chaitanya are the same, non-different. And Krishna, Lord Chaitanya is more merciful, although they're the same. Because Krishna said, surrender to me, Lord Chaitanya said, take love of God. But I'm not qualified, that's okay. Take love of God. But I'm sinful, I'm a bad person, that's okay. Please take. He was the deliverer of fallen souls. The same person. By, of course, teaching the ways of Sharanagati, teaching the ways of surrender to Krishna. So if one is a offender to, to Krishna's form, and small qualifier, but with genuine faith, call out with heart and soul Krishna's names, then the offenses are eliminated. And this Nama Rasa, which is the theme of the whole retreat, is something we can actually experience and enter into. And it says the same. Being under the shelter of the name, then one can cross beyond all of one's offenses. Therefore, Bhakti Minod, calling upon the merciful Rupa Goswami because we should do like that. Now there's many generations gap between Rupa Goswami and the line following Rupa Goswami coming to Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Same for us, but we take shelter of Rupa Goswami's teachings. That means we're Rupa Nugas. And this is his one prayer. Constant loving attachment. How do you overcome distraction? By attachment to something, then you can become detached. By constant loving attachment, one, one's mind goes to the, the object of love. We're not there. Bhaktivedo Thakur is praying as if he's not there. But it, it, it's um, tomorrow we'll be chanting Many of us, most of us, perhaps everyone that's here will, 64 rounds. And during the course of 64 rounds, this is a good phrase to remember. Praying at the lotus feet of Rupa Goswami for such attachment. And if it's a genuine calling, not a mechanical one, but if it's a genuine calling, it'll be responded. <coughs> You'll, you'll feel the Rupa Goswami mercy starting to, to move in, inside. You'll feel. And it may not be instantly, and it may be removing some layers of dust before you get to that deeper feeling, but it happens instantly because he's most merciful. And the, the, the goal, although it's far from where we are, just again, the purpose of a Japa retreat is recognize where we are and we know these lofty goals and make steps towards that goal. And prayer is 
such a step in association with Bhaktivinoda, great souls, that's another step. And Bhaktivinoda is teaching us, take shelter of Rupa Goswami. So there's the song. And now here's an image that depicts the song. Um, it's the, oh, it's, you know, what do you call it? A time-lapse photography of a, the bud of a, some flower opening. And the, the, the opening of the heart and the awakening of Namarasa is like this. And it starts from a closed and it becomes gradually open. Illustrating this or explaining it, here's what Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes. When we chant the holy name in this mood that he has described, these two potencies of Krishna, the Ladini or bliss potency and Samvit potency, descend on Bhakti Devi to reveal to the Jiva the full rasa of the name and the jiva's spiritual form. Now that's elevated, but that's the science of nama rasa. There's something we need to do on our side and something that Krishna does on his side. It's a relationship. And it's all in the name. So when we're chanting our 64 rounds, we're going to have 100,000 opportunities of this. Just one name. <laughs> the Ladini potency and Samvit potency descend on Bhakti Devi to reveal the full rasa of the name and our spiritual form. <clears throat> Whew, that was high. <laughs> now I'll come back down to where we are. <clears throat> The name and the person are the same, and the name has form. We mentioned this on Friday. We'll say it again. It's not that when chanting the name, unless Krishna wants to do it like this, then something outside of yourself appears, and now you can see Krishna's form. Rather, it's within the name, the form of Krishna is there, and one begins to realize the form of Krishna within Krishna's name because the form of Krishna is within Krishna's name, Nama Rupa. And the qualities of Krishna keep going with your attentiveness or chanting. Don't just get, wow, that was a nice ride. Don't do that. Stay in the mood of serving the name. And then the qualities of Krishna become revealed and the pastimes of Krishna become revealed and we're invited into those pastimes. So we're, in these two songs, Bhaktivinoda Thakura said the same thing. The absolute truth Krishna possesses an eternal form of sacred syllables. an eternal form of sacred syllables. You saw this image before, this morning. Here it is again. You'll see it one more time after this. The lotus flower, that's the one on the top, is that's Shudhanam. And the one below is what we're used to, the reflection, or Abbas. And, well, well it's, it looks nice. It's just not... Shudhanam. So we want to go from the reflection to the real thing, or the, the, the actual fullness of Krishna, because in, in a reflection, let's just say, you know, a, a reflection of the sun, the power of the sun is to reflect it in the mirror, but the power of the sun and the reflection in the mirror aren't the same. The power of the holy name is as powerful as Krishna is, which is without limit. And ev all of his potencies are there. Nijasarva shaktis. That's a lot of potency in, in each and every one of Krishna's names. So these messages are to help us 
They're not just nice sounding. They are nice sounding. But it's meant to help us get closer to Shuddhanam before the reflection. Now, back to our theme verse. As promised, we're going to be reciting this every class. So it might, you know, maybe you'll remember it at least the message, is, the essence of the message you'll remember. Let us say it together again. Syad Krishna Nama Charitadi Sitapya Vidya Pito Patapta Rasanasya Narochikano Kintva Darad Anudinam Kalu Saiva Jushta Sad Vikramad Bhavati Tad Gadamola Hantri. So Friday we emphasize. Whoops, what happened? Oh. You chanted the verse without seeing it. Huh? Should we do it again? You had your papers. I don't know what happened. Your, your Shruti Dars. You have good memory. So we discussed this Friday evening Sita, the rock candy, or, sh or sugar candy word. And it's, it removes the avidya, the jaundice-like condition, pitta, right? The jaundice-like condition, too much pitta is jaundice-like condition. So, adharadhi, carefully chanting, and now it's this tad, gula, tad gada mula hantri. So, mula means root, and mula hantri destroys at the root, tad gada Mula Hantri. So his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. The holy name, character, <coughs> pastimes, and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within his tongue and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. So what's, what's the root? What's the root of our disease? Avidya. And um, the byproduct Avidya comes from offense. When we, so if we make offense, if you study, when you study, not if you study, when you study the 10 offenses, you'll find each one of the 10 offenses has to do with a material understanding of something that's not material. Sometime go through the 10 offenses. The, it's a material misunderstanding of something that's not material. We don't understand spiritual, spiritual, spiritual. Devotees, the bhakti process, the scripture, the name, the purpose of the name, etc. The purpose of chanting. We see it as something material. And that causes um, distraction. We're inattentive. And so this offense brings aparad. The aparad brings anartas in the heart. It's the, so offense is at the root. It brings this ignorance. It covers our real knowledge. It covers who we are. It covers the name. It covers Krishna. It covers the Vedas. It covers bhakti process. It covers the devotees. I mean, our perception of them. So, um, these nam aparads, the ten offenses that we're recommended to, to become familiar with and carefully avoid, there's a root offense, according to our acharyas, that root offense is, in Prabhupada's list, it's just number ten, inattentiveness. 
If you cut the root of that tree that's shown in that picture, the tree is finished. It may take a little while, but it's finished. Cut the root, and the tree is finished. So you cut the root of inattentive, uh, the, cut the root, namely inattentiveness, and offenses cease. So, sounds pretty simple. Just be attentive. Not so simple. So, in the purport, it's in your handout sheet, but you'll, you can look at the handout sheet later. It's in the purport of chapter 6, Bhagavad Gita. What's chapter 6? Dhyan. Bringing the mind to the Paramatma feature of the Lord. We read Canto 2, Chapter 2, some section this morning, that Paramatma meditation for the yogis is the same result, Prabhupada explains it, as the bhakti process. But the, the bhakti process, especially for this age, the chanting of the holy name, is far easier and effective. But So he writes in Chapter 6, Text 6, Purport, the mind will be conquered by Nama, Krishna in the form of the holy name, that is, Nami, not by our effort alone. Got it? <laughs> Struggle with the mind. Who wins? The mind. <laughs> Take shelter of the name, who wins? Krishna. Which is more powerful, the mind or Krishna? Krishna. So it doesn't mean we don't make effort, but it's, it's not by our effort alone. So in the, in the song of Bhaktivinoda, here's what he writes, lines six and seven. If one is an offender to Lord Krishna personally, but has genuine faith in the holy name, and calls out with his heart and soul, Rama, Krishna, Hari. Again, Rama, Krishna, Hari. One more time, heart and soul. Rama, Krishna, Hari. Then all his offenses are cast far away and he floats without difficulty in the ocean of divine bliss and transcendental mellows. One of the questions was, what's it like? And I shared this, somebody, at, at two sessions ago at one of our Japa retreats, one man somewhere, I haven't, don't see him here, um, shared what his experience was like. One who had never really committed, but somehow he just, plunged into the ocean and he said he was just floating. Those of you that weren't with us, this some gentleman, 10, 12 years, he had been coming around the Hare Krishna movement. He liked, but he wasn't, and he knew he should, but he really wasn't committing himself to chanting. The most I've ever chanted is four rounds a day. I thought maybe, you know, the one of these Japa retreats, one of these days, and he used to had one here, so I, I said, I guess I gotta come. I mean, it wasn't like, rah, rah, rah. <laughs> he wasn't in the fast lane, this man. He, he was just, you know, he had some faith. And he had this experience. He sat down with no expectation. Just let me try and... He said, I... I felt I was floating. So, and that's just a fellow. It's not Bhaktivinoda Thakur. How to control the mind? Well, we make some effort, but it's not sufficient. Here's what Haridas Thakur says in Harinam Chintamani. Simply by one's own effort, no one in this material world can overcome inattention. So we're in this world, and we can't, on our own effort, overcome inattention. Such a victory can only come by your merciful blessings. Doesn't mean we don't make any effort, but you know, an open-hearted effort. And when that open-hearted effort 
is made, there's a reciprocation. And I couldn't resist one of my um, favorite Rupa Goswami verses is this introduction verse, the, the Vidagta Madhava verse, four parts. I do not know how much nectar the two syllables Krishna have produced. When the holy name of Krishna is chanted, it appears to dance within the mouth. We then desire many, many mouths. You start with making the sound. Here's something you might want to try tomorrow if you get kind of bouncy against the walls or something like mechanical. Pay attention to the sound. It starts, remember we're Rupa Goswami followers. Make the sound carefully. Pronounce carefully. It'll help capture the mind. And next, when that name enters the holes of the ears, we desire many millions of ears. So you focus on making the sound carefully, focus on hearing the sound carefully, and then and stay there for some time and then. And when the holy name dances in the courtyard of the heart, it conquers the activities of the mind. And therefore, all the senses become inert. Control the mind and senses by hearing. And then it enters the heart, this alignment of body, that's how you form the sound. Mind is the attentiveness to the sound, and the heart is what you feel. This is this alignment. Message explained very nicely. <clears throat> As with everything that we do, because we're conditioned, there's obstacles. And the two obstacles is the mind and the, the heart, or the mood of surrender. And the solution, we'll hear something further tomorrow, but the solution is hearing. So if you're chanting in the 64 rounds tomorrow and your mind is wandering, you can tell your mind, stop thinking, start hearing. Because the ear can conquer the mind. Because the hearing is, the sound of Krishna can conquer the mind. Alone we can't. Or, our ISKCON vernacular, don't space out, hear. I don't know if the rest of the world uses that term, but we do. Just surrender to the sound vibration of the holy name. Or, notice the heading is getting bigger and brighter. Please, just hear, hear, hear. From Japa retreats, in the, the feedback session, which we'll do a little bit of on Sunday, uh, several people commented this helped them because they, their mind was wandering, even, you know, sometimes it does. So this is our um, message for awakening Nama Rasa and the hearing of the name goes into the ear and we feel something. We feel this Krishna connection and go wherever Krishna wants us to go with our heart, with our mind. We just stay with Krishna. This is our this is our process. So let's see if there's some discussion. Back there in the sound box, we've got a microphone. Yes. Comments or questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. 
When we talk about uh, japa, we usually say that you should say it louder and you should hear it nicer. But uh, what about the eyes? <laughs> because when I am chanting, I have difficult time to close my eyes and, you know, concentrate on these two things. So um, I was talking to this with Ravinsar Prabhu and he said that keep a form of Krishna in front of you or you should imagine that you are in temple room and you know, you're concentrating on the deities, looking at the deities and something like that. So um, do you also uh, suggest or something like that? Or I'll say a few things. Most important is anything that works, do that. And for you, each of us are a little different, and so whatever works, do that. Here, that's a second one. Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes, if you're distracted, turn out the lights, put blindfolds on, and just hear the sound vibration. It's a suggestion, it's not like that's the panacea, that's what everyone's supposed to do. And I know some people that do that. They turn out the lights, they're not distracted by sight because they can't see anything. Well, here's a third one. Something that I ha have learned that worked for me I'll say it quickly, there's a long story, but when say, so I, 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 ha, I have a, in Houston, there's a, um, a, a painting on the wall in the room, the Sanyas quarters where I stay, and it's a pushkar painting of Krishna Balaram down here, nice big tree, and some, off in the distance is some cow herd boys with some cows and sky. And I, I went shortly after Balaram's appearance day. During Balaram's appearance day, I had read Krishna book, chapter two, is the prayers by the demigods to Krishna in the womb. Chapter two, Krishna book. Prabhupada writes, to, to be successful in spiritual life, one, not, one needs strength. Bala. Not material strength, but spiritual strength, which comes from Balaram. So it like, it, somehow it moved something inside. Needs spiritual strength. And we're chanting, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Rama. So Rama can mean Lord Chaitanya, excuse me, it can mean Ramachandra, it can mean Balaram, it can mean Krishna. So looking at this, painting, Hari Rama, the, the, the mood, I'm not saying the words, but the mood of Balaram, please give me the strength to carry out my service to Krishna. Hari, <clears throat> and you know, it, it just happened spontaneously. I started lifting my arms with my bead back on one hand. And the, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Then there's Hari Krishna. So Krishna, you're all attractive, and my mind is distracted. Krishna, please attract my mind to you, O oh, all attractive one. So that's something that I, I still continue it. Maybe, you know, a few rounds. The, the different places where I travel, they know I like that painting. They don't necessarily know why, so, but they made it like a, a a big blow up of it, kind of a poster of it. And I sit in front of you. You know, it just happens. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. But it, it's, it's, I'm, I, I'm conscious to be careful not to get distracted from the, the sound vibration. Because the sound vibration is everything. But the, the sound vibration is to a person. The sound is the person and it's to a person. So don't get distracted by looking at your deity or a candle or, you know, something. 
It's the sound vibration. You know, it's in, in front of the deities. Tomorrow will be in front of the deities. So you, may, that may be, you know, that number four one, maybe that's the one for you. You're calling the name of the person and there he is. And you're having this dialogue just calling his name. And he's hearing and he's reciprocating. It's, and, you know, et cetera, that's number five. And so it's whatever works for you. The visual comes, spiritual visual comes from the hearing part. And the hearing part with the chanting, so shravanam kirtanam. Do that nicely. The ear and the tongue. And the rest comes. Thank and you know, in, in your home, whatever works for you. Somebody back there? Hi, Krishna Rupatswami, all the Vaishnavas. I just first wanted to appreciate you um, making the point that everybody's an individual and their own relationship with the holy name. And then I, I have a comment just about that flower that was opening. That's a peony. And the peony is interesting because it doesn't open by itself. It actually needs these little ants to nibble on the sweetness of the edge of the flower and assist its opening. So I was thinking of the Ladini and the Samvit as the, <laughs> as the ants. Horticulturist you are, huh? Okay. Somebody else? Yes, in the pack. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. My kids have a three-hour Bhagavad Gita. Speak slowly, please. My kids have a three-hour Bhagavad Gita chanting tomorrow afternoon. Which is more beneficial to them? Go, taking them to the Bhagavad Gita class outside near home or bringing them here to the Japa retreat? How do we think about these issues? I didn't get it. Can you say it slower? My kids have a three-hour Bhagavad Gita chanting session in the afternoon tomorrow, which is more... You're going to do? No, so Oh, you else. have an option, a three-hour Bhagavad Gita session. Yes. You want to know which one to choose? Yes. Flip a coin. <laughs> well, my second question is... Which, whichever works for you, whichever helps you be drawn to Krishna, do that. Whatever helps you be drawn to Krishna, do that. I'm sorry for being, you know, flippant. It, it both work. Both are fine. That's the flip of coin. Both are fine. Whichever work for you. Be, you know, w one, one thought is, but it's up to you. How often do you have the opportunity to come together with some number of devotees and chant the holy name with focus together, that energy, effort, focus? That's, very, that's not so often. And... I don't know how often this three-hour Bhagavad Gita class goes for, you know, how many weeks. But that's maybe a consideration. But the bottom line is whatever works for you. It's, it's you know, very customized, the bhakti process. Now you have something else. You're done. Okay. <laughs> Someone else had their hand up up front? Anyone? I saw a hand, so Parupa. So the point about the alignment of the heart and the mind, mm -hmm. they seem to Here be covered again. already by the the rest of the items when we are talking about Samanda, Seva, Vipralamba. And um, the surrender or the sharanagati, because they, they are the essence of bringing alignment to the mind and the heart. So, specifically, what what is it that the alignment is meant to cover? If well, th again, this is a, this is a 
Sachinandan Swami message, and he's the best one to ask because he's the author of that message. So it can mean different things for different people, and it means a certain thing to him, and it's with feeling. But the Rupa Goswami approach is when you hear carefully, it helps to bring the heart into alignment. Say it negatively. If you don't hear properly, the heart is not going to be touched. Here's the Bhakti Siddhanta message. It's just different ways of expressing. Perhaps it's the same thing, but a different ways of expressing. Bhakti Siddhanta says, listen carefully, it's nice. <clears throat> The chanting of the holy name is not merely making some sound. You can have a machine that makes a sound. Or you can train a parrot to make a sound. That's not chanting with the lips and the tongue. But when you call out with your arms raised, Oh, Lord Nityananda, you're the deliverer of the pure holy name. And when Lord Nityananda hears your call and that pure holy name touches your heart, then the very same lips and the very same tongue, that's chanting. We're, we, each of us are a little different. We express ourselves in different ways. But the alignment is f the, the feeling aspect. Now, technically, the mind thinking, feeling, and willing. So it's not like a cookie cutter, a basket over here and a bucket over there. And they're really not the same. There's some overlap. So it's just an expression. But language means, language is important. <laughs> And it's the, the feeling aspect of dependency and calling out. As with Bhakti Thakur's song. With faith and calling out. That's the heart part. And you, it's not 100% different from the mind orienting itself that way also. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, Raj, you mentioned about Krishna and the holy name is same, non-different, there is no difference. At the same time also mentioned that holy name is more merciful than Krishna. I'm just repeating Bhakti we know at yes. his feet. <laughs> so, could you please uh, explain? I that? thought I did, but I'll do it again. I'll try again. Within Krishna, everything is there. And within the name, everything is there. And the fullness of mercy is exhibited more with the name than with the person. The fullness of the name is, even if one has offended the person, the name will help you become free from the, the reaction of that offense of offending the person. The mercifulness of the name is thus greater although they're both equally merciful, because they're both equal. And I compared Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are the same. It's not that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is an avatar of Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Krishna. And he's more merciful, although they're the same. Because he gives what, what Krishna didn't give. Krishna gave, made a requirement. Lord Chaitanya didn't make that requirement. Surrender unto me. Just please take the name. So, Namo Mahabhadanyaya. Same. That means they're equally merciful. But Mahaprabhu is more merciful. The name, they're equally the same. But the name delivers 
that mercy more fully, more completely, more robustly, although they both have it equally because they're the source of everything. We're okay? Okay. Okay, they're right in front of you. There's two. Then we'll, we'll come to the lady's side next. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, so the, um, in continuation with uh, what Paramaru Prabhu was saying... Slowly. <coughs> I got it to keep going, but slowly. So, um, my personal experience is uh, when calling out, when chanting, um, my personal experience is whenever I'm calling out, uh, I'm calling out in the mood of uh, the yes, thank you, please, the please part. I'm in trouble, please help me out. It, that's the. That's fine. That's the calling out most of the times. That's fine. But uh, I don't know if that's the right way or. It's fine, it's whatever works for you. We're dependent. The mood of dependence is, is fine. You know, a big part of the problem is we're not really feeling it. We're saying it, but you know, it's it's to a degree. It's it's practice. There's nothing wrong with practice, but we're not. So just keep going and go go with. This is the heart, with the feeling of dependence. Okay. Sure, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. It's a question about the uh, yesterday topic about conscious soul is conscious and consciousness. That question again. <laughs> Have you and P- Paramrupa been having lunch together? <laughs> <laughs> the the soul is conscious and it extends consciousness. Yes. When we call Krishna's name with, with loving feelings, we are extending our consciousness to call out for Krishna's mercy. Fantastic. And Krishna is also conscious and extends consciousness. Of course. And so, when we call with that loving feelings, He reciprocates. Of course. And so, uh, thinking like that seemed to be helping me in chanting. So, is that the right understanding? That's, that's a fantastic understanding. We should have you give classes on chanting. <laughs> but do it consistently, then, you'll, then there's some purity is the force. So, just stay with that. And be, you know, beware when the, the distraction thing comes that you say, no, thank you. I want to be a- attentive. So on the lady's side, someone? I'm yes. Oh, there we go. You got an extra microphone. Okay. <laughs> so actually... um. The, so the, uh, uh, the, uh, the obstacles, last part, like mind and heart are ever obstacles uh, for chanting attentively. So you said that hearing, um, through hearing, hearing is the solution. Yes. Uh, so I, I, my intelligence is convinced that through hearing my mind will be, uh, in a way, to offerable to Krishna, my mind will be controlled. Yes. But, uh, so one thing I want to clarify is hearing refers to hearing only Krishna's name or... Hearing to scriptures also. Hearing the Krishna's name. What was the other option? Scriptures, like Bhagavatam and uh, sure, Guru Sad. Sure, sure. We said that. I'll say it again. You're going to write it down. Fantastic. <clears throat> this is from that three-part biography of Bhakti, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's life where he's quoted as having said, just as we don't worship Krishna alone, we worship Radha Krishna. So similarly, we don't chant the holy name alone. We chant the holy name together with the hearing of scripture. That's the Swarup Shakti 
of Krishna, not Krishna alone. No, the mantra is not Krishna alone, it's Hare Krishna. But that's Bhakti Siddhanta's teaching. So we do both. Thank you, Maharaj. So uh, confirmed by our great Acharya. So now I understand that how hearing can help us to trans. Uh oh. I didn't turn my phone off. Shh. <laughs> I know what it's about. It's, it's, it's a health crisis somebody is having. You know, they're about to depart their body. That's what's going on. So. So uh, it makes sense now that how. It, However, our heart also gets transformed through hearing. Because I was not getting convinced that only through hearing Well, it does become transformed Krishna. through hearing. And it's not alone. We do both. But many, so many times, Prabhupada said, if one doesn't have a liking for reading, just the name. But you know, in, with us, for the name, this Hare Krishna. My doubt is like name alone cannot transform the heart because the name condition. can transform the heart. Name alone can transform. Name can transform the heart. It's right in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says it stands alone. However, then there's a long purport quoting Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Essentially, we also need so many things because we're conditioned souls. Therefore, but the name alone, because the name is Krishna, it's, it's sufficient. But we have these additional things that we do because it's, that's how our acharyas have given the process to us. Okay? But don't, so don't say it again. It's not that the, na the name cannot transform the heart. The name transforms the heart. And from the name... Especially when we receive the name from the Siptic succession, the Siptic succession representatives are giving us Krishna and knowledge of Krishna through Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam in particular. So we hear that also as part of the heart transformation. So, so is it that attentive chant, the, in that case, so by attentively, our effort is to chant attentively. Yes. And then Krishna reciprocates and transforms, transforms my heart. Is that right understanding? Yes, it's the right understanding. And, you know, attentively is a big word. There's many parts to it. You can break it apart into little parts and put it back together. And attent it attentively has many features. Mercy and effort. Mercy and effort. Others that haven't yet spoken would like to? Yeah, he, I see. It's someone, I just, because we're going to go to him, that's going to be the last one. Okay. Microphone. So, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, Sometimes I give, let's say, a book or something to my friends. They tell me, Sudhakar, I'll read your book if you read this book which I'm giving you. Now, what we read is scripture and what they give me is not scripture. And then they, they say, Sudhakar, I'm not going to read your scripture because you're not reading the book which I gave you. Or one of my friends says, why don't you do some vipassana for... He has been telling me... Why don't you do what? Vipassana. Okay. He says, take a Vipassana class for three years and, you know, we want to handle them very carefully because we know what the truth is, but we don't want to come across as either headstrong or we want to be smooth with them. So how do we handle these situations? You know, it, it, so much depends upon the relationship with the person, how you respond to this. 
So much depends on the relationship, how you respond to something like that. I mean, my, my friends are very brainy, very close friends, but they're just trying to find a reason to nitpick both on me and ISKCON, and I really get lost sometimes. Well, again, it depends on the person and your relationship with the person. But, you know, here's, if you want a list of options, because I don't know the person and the relationship, but, you, you know, you can say, I, I'm not interested, in my relationship with you is not to convert you from that as... There are principles, and these principles are universal. Our, let it, let's not talk about this ism, that ism. Prabhupada ha, d, d, would regularly use that pathway. Don't, not this ism, that ism. There's universal principles of the soul, and would just stick with the universal principles of the soul. And there's a one source that's the source of everything. And to connect with that source of everything is loving service. Not this ism, that ism, please. Let's not do that. Because you've got your authority, I've got my authority. Let's not do that. Let's speak universal principles. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure, the, Prabhupada didn't so much say this, but I'm sure you could say this. Those, these principles are, are within your teachings and your, your path also because they're universal. That's just big principle. Follow the, the ism that you like. Do it nicely. And there's principles within that ism and, and within all isms that are bona fide and genuine. The real, the real fruit, the test is love. Loving service to the Supreme. And so the more that one can hear about the particulars of the Supreme, name, four qualities, pastimes, activities, that's a principle. So depends on the person and the relationship, how you'd respond. Don't be disgenuine, but if they want to drag you into something that's a dispute or a fault-finding back and forth, you know, let's not go there. Let's not speak about isms. Let's speak about principles, universal principles that are found within all isms, all teachings. That's, that's an approach. And, you know, I value our relationship. I don't want to get into this dispute thing. That's not what I'm here for. I hope it's not what you're here for. We want to... That's that we have the shared goal. We want to get closer to our eternal position and loving relationship with God. Let's speak about the principles that will help us get there. Follow your ism. Be really good at it. Should we make an effort to read something which they give? Or it should we just on focus you on... The, it depends on you and them and the relationship, whether you want to or not. I, you know, when it comes to things like that, Generally, I don't. Or, where is that person at where there's a next step that can take them closer to the goal of loving Krishna, loving God, and, and focus there? And a big part that's an obstacle for most conditioned souls is the bodily conception. And another one is following the essential commandments of that teaching, like thou shalt not kill for the Christian sector. And, just, and don't go off, you know, they want to go to something else and something else. Stay there. But, you know, depends on you and the relationship you have with the person, whether you, you want to or not want to. I don't want to... I don't want to Carry on more with this. Okay. It's now...
Is it, are, are we ready with Nama Yagya? Are the Kirtaniers here? They're here? They're coming. They're here. They're here. So that's... Yeah, they, so there's a uh, sankalpa for a few minutes, uh, according to our schedule. I beg your pardon? There's a sankalpa session. Okay. I yeah. went too long. How, how long is that supposed to be <laughs> That's for? only for five minutes. Okay. Who's going to lead that? Uh, Rishta. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. You have a partner? No. She didn't come. So, humbly request if you can uh, hear through Sankalpa. Uh, probably this is what we have realized with the summary, what Rishta has, is putting up. And it might be a different approach what you have, what you all have for to get ready for tomorrow's 64 round chanting. And also I would humbly request if you can stick on, stay in the temple room, not go out for the Nama Yajna. So most other devotees will be joining us in few minutes. So it will be continuing till 8 o'clock. So after that we can break, break up for dinner prasad. Hare Krishna.